Hey everyone, it's Deacon082, and I've taken a few days off since the uploading of the finale of Donkey Kong, because I've been hard at work on this series. Many of you know what's coming, because you've kept up with my channel and my previous videos, but if you've happened to just stumble across this video randomly, this will be Pokemon Crystal version. Game for the Game Boy Color, and is, if you're looking at the title screen here, you'll see it kind of focuses on the stories of Unknown and a new legendary Suicune. Oddly enough, both of these are going to be optional in what we're doing. Here is Suicune and the Unknown. Though this series is going to be quite different. You're probably wondering what the little bars on the bottom and on the side are for. Well, there'll be just many things that I'll be introducing during this series, and we'll get into that later. But we are going to start a new game here. Are you a boy or a girl? We are a boy. Hmm. 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 What? You woke me up. Will you check the clock for me? What time is it? Hmm. I don't know. I think we'll just conveniently look down in the corner to see that it is day 10 o'clock and, oh, nine minutes. Perfect. This little clock is because the game is in real time. Now I have this game on cartridge. This is on emulator, but my cartridge no longer saves. And that's the main reason why I'm doing this on emulator, obviously. The other reason is because I feel I can add a lot more stuff doing it this way. So now, for the most important question, what did we say our name was? And for the purposes of this, well, we'll go with Deacon here. I don't use this name in games very often, but... I mean, in games like this very often, but we'll go for it. A world of dreams and adventures with Pokemon awaits. Let's go. You'll be seeing us later. Now in this game, usually we have a potion in our PC, but we don't, oddly enough, which... One little drawback about this. We'll head downstairs where our mom is here, at 10 in the morning, greeting us. Oh, Deacon, our neighbor Professor Elm was looking for you. He said he wanted you to do something for him. Oh, I almost forgot. Your Pokemon gear is back from the repair shop. Here you go. And we received the Poke Gear. Pokemon gear, or just Poke Gear. It's essential if you want to be a good trainer. Oh, the day of the week isn't set. What day is it? Oh, we'll conveniently look down at this clock again to see that it is Wednesday, July 18th. But the day this video is being uploaded is Friday the 20th. So I'm recording this two days in advance. You also, if you have a keen eye, you'll be able to know what day I'm recording each and every episode. So, she wants us to go see Professor Elm. So we'll we'll head into his lab. Hmm, what's this? A suspicious guy outside of his window. Hmm. So this is the famous Elm Pokemon lab. What are you staring at? Oh, you get lost, you kid. I see where you are. We'll just walk up to Elm here. Elm! <laughs> Elm! That's him speaking. Deacon, there you are. I needed to ask you a favor. I'm conducting new Pokemon research right now. I was wondering if you could help me with it, Deacon. You see, I'm writing a paper that I want to present at a conference, but there are some things I don't quite understand yet. So, I'd like you to raise a Pokemon that I recently caught. Um, no thanks. But, but please, I need your help. No. But please, you said that line already. Fine, we'll say yes. Okay, when he announces his findings, we'll delve a bit deeper. Oh, an email. Ah, this game came out in 2001, in the days of email, apparently. So he wants us to see his acquaintance, Mr. Pokemon, who has an amazing discovery. So he wants us to go in place of him, because he's apparently too lazy to walk to Mr. Pokemon's house. Mr. Pokemon's horse, or even send his aid. So here we get our first choice of the series. We have three different choices of starters here. The first one is Cyndaquil, the fire type. Cyndaquil has good special attack, learns a lot of good fire moves, and will be quite useful, seeing as there aren't a ton of fire types available early on. Um, it evolves into Quilava at level 14, 
which is the earliest of any starter, and Quilava is really strong as well, and it later evolves into Typhlosion, which is probably the best starter you can choose in this situation, especially for a Nuzlocke, which I will be getting into in a minute. The next starter choice is the Water-type, Totodile, based on a Crocodile, obviously. Totodile, um, in the later games is probably the best choice, but this game is before the physical special split, which occurred at the start of Generation 4, and what that did is it basically made his water and ice moves that you could teach him, and even dark moves in this game, special instead of physical. And Totodile's best attacking stat is its physical attack. Totodile evolves at level 18, which is rather late, into Croconaw, and then again at level 30, which is really early, into Feraligator. Feraligator, really strong attack, good defenses, overall a great choice for your team. All three of these are. And the third option is the grass type, Chikorita. Chikorita is more defensive of the three. It starts out with pretty balanced stats, but later on its defenses will increase a lot faster. It learns a lot of grass and status moves. It evolves at level 18, no, level 16 into Bayleaf, and then once again at level 36, or no, 32, what am I talking about? At level 32 into Meganium. Meganium is really good defensively, and has quite a bit of special attack to go around. But because it's a grass type, it has the most weaknesses of the starters, and also grass is the worst offensive type of the three. Unfortunately, well, not really unfortunately, but I will be ch I will be picking Chikorita in this for a little more of a challenge. So we receive our Chikorita, and just because nobody really uses Chikorita. So I've been thinking deep about nicknames here. Chikorita, uh, the Chico part refers to some sort of plant, but it also refers to the word small in Spanish, as well as the Ida suffix. But later on, it will evolve into something called Meganium, which starts off as Mega. So we have something really small growing into something really big, and the Spanish word for growth or rise is Subida. And because it's a male, I'm going to make it Subido. So this is just a really obscure nickname, and this is probably as deep as I'll dive in throughout this series, but just want it to be a little different for the first one we're going to get. So we've already started off, we've had some really obscure nicknames. Anyway, what is a Nuzlocke run, you might be wondering. Well, a Nuzlocke run has three main rules. Really, it only has three rules. And I'll just be discussing them for the rest of this episode, regardless of what's actually going on in the game. Um, the first rule, every Pokémon you have must be nicknamed, which we accomplished that with Subido. It helps you gain a closer bond with your Pokémon. The second rule, only the first wild Pokémon encountered on each route may be captured. And I'm going to hold off until we get Pokeballs to do this, because it's unfair because we're going to run into a lot of Pokemon on this route. The third rule, and the most important rule, if a Pokemon faints in battle, it becomes dead, and it can never be used again for the rest of the game, which is what makes this a challenge. And you'll have to deal with the deaths, and that will lead to the bonding and the nicknames. But to make it a Nuzlocke challenge, we are going to be adding a few more rules to make this, well, more challenging and more fun. First of all, well, this kind of ties along to the first encounter in an area, but any gift Pokémon count for the area where they are obtained. And obviously, if that rule wasn't in effect, and we couldn't get gift Pokémon, well, we wouldn't have our little Subido, Chikorita, here. Another rule, once we do get Pokeballs, I will only be, like, a lot of runs, they restrict it to only normal Pokeballs, but I'm going to allow all of them, but if a Pokemon evades three Pokeballs, 
in one battle, it's not, it's not meant to be captured. And it also means we can't capture anything else on that route for the remainder of the game. An obvious rule, no legendaries are allowed in this. Of course, the only legendaries we'll be seeing in this in the normal game are Suicune. We won't be capturing it. Another thing, no trades. So Pokemon that evolve by trade are unable to be used. There are also a few in-game trades. We won't be doing these as well. Um, in terms of battling, there are some more rules we will be following. First of all, I am not going to be using healing items in battle. And that is going to be a difficult one because, well, you know, I might end up in a difficult situation and need to heal. And if that comes up, well, I'm out of luck. The next rule, we'll go to our options menu and make sure our battle style is on set. That means we cannot switch out after each turn before the next Pokemon is revealed. Um, and back to healing items, I'm not going to be allowed to buy them either. So, I'll still be able to buy items like Pokeballs and Repels. Speaking of Repels, we can also use Repels to bypass a route if we want to come back and capture something later. Another item that's interesting, Revives. Since Pokemon don't really faint in this run, they will actually be dying, Revives are pointless. So all Revives and Matt's Revives must be tossed as soon as we obtain them. And back to the Pokemon. Every Pokemon that you have on, in your party must remain there until they faint. So even if we capture something new that we want to use, unfortunately we have to stick with the ones we started with. So that could be tricky. It also keeps us from putting really powerful Pokemon on our team early on. Um, also, I'm not going to be using an HM slave. And also, Pokemon that are fainted cannot use HMs. And if you need an HM to progress, like if you are surfing and your surfer faints, then it's an instant game over. Um, I know I'm getting bored, boring here with the rules, but there are just a few more. I'm going to be doing a level cap as well. For each gym, when I enter the gym, meaning before I fight the gym trainers, I cannot be higher than... I, I mean, I can not be on the gym leader's highest level. Like, the first gym, Faulkner uses a level 9 Pidgeotto. Nobody on my team can be higher than level 8. And if they're above level 8, they have to set the gym challenge, they have to sit the gym challenge out. I mean, they can't be used. If I do black out in a gym battle, which I have before, I get to restart with any Pokemon I have left in my PC, but, so I'm able to progress, I get an extra two levels added on to the level cap, so I can go above the gym leader's highest. That really only accounts for the fact that I won't have gym trainers left to battle. Two more rules, really quick. One of them I'm going to save until the next episode. Pokemon Centers, I am allowing myself to use them freely, but not when I'm progressing through the game. Like, in my very first Nuzlocke I did, I allowed myself... I really restricted my healing, and it was just a pain grinding up levels because I had to conserve PP so much. So, I'm going to make it where off-screen I can heal as much as I want, but I won't be healing much on-screen in the actual recordings. And, my challenge will end when I defeat Lance and become the champion of the Elite Four. That's as simple as it is. Or, the bad ending, every Pokemon I have in my PC faints. Which, we don't want that to happen. So I stalled here because we're going to step outside. And when you step outside, we get a phone call p from Professor Elm. <laughs> Hello? Deacon, it's a disaster. Um, it's just terrible. What should I do? It- Oh no, please get back here now! So, looks like Professor Elm's lab, there's been some kind of disaster occurred there. So, this has been a really boring episode. Nothing occurred except us getting our starter, little Sibido here. Oh, Sibido is holding a berry, which will come in handy 
later on. But next time on Let's Play Pokemon Crystal version, we will be headed back to Professor Elm's laboratory to see what's happened at the lab. See you next time.